Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome friends, welcome to this course on combustion in air breathing aero engines. My name is uh, Dr. Shweta Praho Chaudhuri. I am a faculty member at the Department of Aerospace Engineering, Indians of Science and in this course I will be assisted by two teaching assistants who have helped in preparing this uh, PowerPoint slides and they are Mr. Harsha Uranakar and Mr. Himanshu Dave. They are my PhD students. So, uh, in this course, first we will talk about uh, in this thing uh, we will talk about the motivation that uh, first what is combustion, why do we need to study it, why is it indispensable for uh, for air breathing aero engines, aerospace engines uh, and uh, those things and then we will provide you about the outline of this course, uh, how we are going to study different things. Uh, the basic approach will be to start with fundamental processes and then go into more complex situations and then go into engines. But first in this thing uh, as it shows this light, we will talk about uh, what is combustion. As you see uh, combustion is the study of uh, chemically reacting flows with highly exothermic temperature sensitive reactions. Okay, now combustion can happen in different forms. It can be uh, something it can be something like an auto ignition, it can happen through different kind of flames, it can happen through detonations and explosions. But our primary I mean our experience tells that what we encounter in daily life is uh, we can encounter a laminar Bunsen flame what you might have seen in a, your chemistry lab which you can uh, see here. This is the, the this is the uh, laminar Bunsen flame that you see this is the essentially the flame structure or you can see sometimes a turbulent jet flame in the laboratory where uh, combustion happens in a turbulent flow and the structure of the flame is highly distorted and the flame structure is wrinkled and so on and so forth. Okay. So, these are the uh, first two kinds of flames that we can encounter commonly. Now, what is uh, what is most uh, fascinating about combustion is that there are two things. Uh, first of all, it is a multi physics it involves different kind different branches of science. The two pillars of combustion that is involved is essentially chemical kinetics and fluid mechanics. Of course, it also involves thermodynamics, it involves heat transfer, but the two pillars of combustion is essentially chemical kinetics and fluid mechanics and to uh, develop a great deal of expertise in combustion, you need to understand chemical kinetics and fluid mechanics both in equal details. Okay. The second important thing is that combustion is a multi scale science. What do you mean by multi scale will be apparent in the next slide, but you see here combustion is essentially it something you have got reactants, then uh, you uh, apply some kind of a spark and the reactants which can be like hydrocarbons etcetera it goes to form products which can be carbon dioxide and water. This is our common perception of what combustion is. Now, this is what we see on a global scale on a broad scale we see uh, that uh, hydrocarbons like uh, like a uh, kerosene or like uh, or methane or natural gas uh, etcetera becomes uh, carbon dioxide and water. But essentially what it involves is that it involves electronic orbital rearrangements at the molecular level. Okay. So, that is why it is it involves this electronic structure change. Okay. You see you can see soot formation. Okay. Now, soot formation happens at very very small scales, soot formation happens in a candle flame. Okay. It can happen in a it can happen in a diesel engine. Okay. So, that involves nanoscale processes whereas, it can also involve turbulent fuel air mixing which are which happens at a larger scale. Okay. So, it is this different physical processes and different uh, which happens at a different scales of length and time that makes the study of combustion fascinating. Okay. And of course, uh, this is what I was talking about that it involves different kind of time scales and length scales. So, uh, the molecular the electronic rearrangement is governed by the principles of quantum mechanics. Okay. So, that happens at the order of picoseconds and at the order of picometers. Okay. Molecular dynamics which is a study of uh, 
of different uh, uh, how different uh, how large number of atoms and molecules uh, interact among themselves that basically governs uh, is basically when you take from go from single molecules to multiple molecules and multiple atoms that is uh, that that those scales are of, of this order okay then you come to the kinetics models okay which are of the order of where the time constant of different reactions are of the order of uh, microseconds and micrometers now then you come into fuel air mixing and then the subsequent combustion reactions and those are essentially governed by these kinds of techniques which we might have heard and uh, well like direct numerical simulations etc but those are not involved right now uh, those are not uh, will be invoked right now but what i want to give uh, the basic impression that i want to give through this slide is that once again that combustion is a science and of course that science is used in heavily in engineering and that these things involved processes that happens at different scales of length and time all the order of all the way from picometers to millimeters to meters because an engine is of the order of a meter whereas in time scale it happens from the order of uh, like picoseconds to of the order of milliseconds okay now why should we learn combustion yes of course it's a fascinating branch of science and engineering but more importantly it is its role in our in shaping modern civilization is, is cannot be overemphasized today if you see 85% of the world's energy needs is supported by combustion of fossil fuels or biofuels okay now of course uh, that is uh, huge right 85% and and that is even after taking into account all the development in renewables but then of course uh, com then uh, since 85% of the world's energy need is supported by combustion it is uh, it has uh, it has led to uh, many uh, benefits it has made our life smoother we can go from one place to another at a faster uh, in a in a very short amount of time but then that also comes with a price the price is that of energy sustainability that is your these kinds of fuels that we burn these fossil fuels their their supply is not uh, infinite energy security uh, we have to get this fossil fuel from some other places in uh, from some other countries and then most importantly which has become paramount uh, which has bec of become of paramount importance nowadays is that climate change because an obvious product of combustion is carbon dioxide and as you know that carbon dioxide and water vapor both are very strong greenhouse gases so then uh, but all these things does not mean that combustion itself is bad combustion is very important it will remain important in the foreseeable future but as for us that is the present generation and the future generation combustion scientists the onus is on us to make this process more efficient less uh, less emitting and uh, more cleaner and more greener okay so that is the challenge of the combustion scientists how can we optimize this process towards uh, uh, towards uh, uh, a better future okay and uh, also you must understand that the energy infrastructure is also changing okay now uh, for example uh, here uh, we are encountering uh, now modern fuels are becoming more and more uh, uh, heavier in the sense that they are involved very large molecules of hydrocarbons coal uh, shale oil tar sand etc and uh, renewable fuels are becoming very very important biofuels uh, 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 syn syn gas biofuels alcohols etc and new engines are being de devised okay so uh, so we have to uh, for uh, present and future combustion scientists we have to design we have to we have to get this kind of new fuels and we have to ensure that this those burn properly and in new kind of engines which are more efficient which are more clean and uh, which can produce more power in uh, uh, as you might demand uh, for an aero engine okay so one of this uh, hallmarks of this uh, uh, combustion science is the new uh, uh, this uh, taps combustor this two in annular premix combustor that uh, that ge has uh, got recently these new combustors support the boeing uh, 787 in most cases and uh, as you see that uh, this involves a lot of understanding of the fundamental understanding of combustion science this engine uh, has evolved uh, where uh, new understanding of combustion science has played a major role in its development so the next question is that for aero propulsion which is uh, 
the the main focus of this uh, this course that is here the, the the name of the course is uh, combustion in air breathing aero engines so why is it so indispensable for aero propulsion and uh, more indispensable in the sense that it's uh, if, uh, in the sense that it is uh, in even in the next uh, uh, 50 years we do not see that for long distance flights or for military propulsion we do not see any alternative other than um, aero propulsion other than other than combustion now why is that so the answer lies in the energy density the gravimetric and the volumetric energy density. Basically, these numbers, what you see here is that mega joules per kg and mega joules per liter. And on the left hand side in this table, I have the fuel type. So, you see that for a lithium ion battery, it is about 0.3 uh, mega joules per kg, the gravimetric energy density, and the volumetric energy density is also 0.3 mega joules per liter. Okay? However, and you can see the other numbers, uh, whereas you see for kerosene, which is the fuel of, uh, which is the, which is the fuel uh, of choice in modern, uh, modern engines like modern gas turbine engines runs on essentially different variants of kerosene. You see the same number, uh, you see the same parameter that is this gravimetric energy density is 100 times greater than 100 times larger than that of the lithium ion battery. Okay. So, why is, this, why is this number so important? Because in an aero propulsion engine, you can only carry some amount of mass as your fuel and you only have some amount of a fixed volume in space uh, which will allow you to carry the, carry the fuel. So, in that given volume, you are trying to optimize, you are trying to carry many things. So, you cannot have infinite amount of space or infinite amount of load carrying capacity uh, which can be filled with the fuel. So, in a given amount of space and for a given amount of mass, you get the maximum amount of energy out for kerosene and that is 100 times more than 100 times larger than that of the uh, modern batteries. So, this is a very large gap which uh, needs to be covered if uh, propulsion has to become electric. So, that is why uh, uh, there is uh, we do not see uh, such chance in the foreseeable future and hence uh, aero propulsion uh, as people say uh, even in this uh, very recent paper that you see that uh, aero propulsion is uh, most likely to depend on combustion in the foreseeable future. Okay. And that the reason is that to summarize it is basically due to the gravimetric and the volumetric energy densities of the liquid fuels. Okay. And also with other things that uh, you see that uh, natural gas has uh, 45, uh, but its uh, volumetric energy density is less. So, for hydrogen it has got very high gravimetric energy density, but its volumetric energy density is very, very less. So, as an engineer if you are supposed to optimize in this table, you are given these kinds of fuel sources if you are supposed to optimize, no wonder we will come up on kerosene. And no wonder this has emerged as the fuel of choice in modern edu engines. right? So, this is why uh, because of the energy density of uh, liquid fuels like kerosene, uh, combustion is, uh, is, the, is the main method by which chemical to uh, thermal and then to mechanical energy transfer is, is implemented in aeropropulsion. So, where do we see uh, combustion in aeropropulsion? Not only aeropropulsion in engines, how does, how does combustion look like in these engines? So, this is the picture that motivates, this is in an SI engine, this picture, this is in a gas turbine engine, this is in an afterburner, of a gas turbine engine, this is also an afterburner, this is a rocket engine and this is a wildfire and this is a supernova. Okay. So, in nature you see on nature and engineering, you see combustion not happening in the very smooth and quiescent uh, and in a very uh, laminar manner that you see in a Bunsen flame, rather it happens in a very distorted and convoluted structure uh, because the embedded flow in which combustion happens is invariably turbulent. So, essentially you can it can be safely said that all these aero propulsion engines that you see these gas turbine engines, afterburners, uh, rockets, scramjets, etcetera, etcetera, all this involve combustion in turbulent flows and the combustion is uh, essentially turbulent. 
in these things. The reason is that also this all these uh, aero engines are uh, work at high pressure that the reason is comes from thermodynamics that uh, you must extract work only after you have inputted heat at high pressure. So, at high pressure your density is high your Reynolds number is high and as a result of which your uh, flow is invariably turbulent and uh, you can get uh, you can only have turbulent combustion in these aero engines. And this is how if you look into the fundamental manner how turbulent combustion looks like it happens through this kind of different uh, where the flow disturbs the flame at a different scales and this is how the turbulent combustion looks like. But then as at this moment uh, as you see that this process is complex ok. There is uh, you have a fuel uh, that is undergoing reactions then you uh, release energy ok and then that releases heat and these all this happens in a very complex turbulent flow. So, this means that at this moment we are not prepared to right now understand uh, how exactly combustion happens in the aero engines. So, we have to take a step back and understand the very fundamentals of combustion ok. If you take a small unit of the flame ok or say for example, this part we have to know or this uh, this this kind of if you take this unit uh, flames if you can uh, from this different parts of the uh, of the combustor and the, so our uh, our uh, the, the road that we will follow is that we will try to understand how does this thing when you remove the complexities of the flow etcetera how does combustion happen in a very simple environment or in other words in a laminar environment and even preceding that what is the basic thermodynamic mechanisms through which uh, or the kinetic mechanisms through which a reactant goes into a few uh, goes from uh, to become products and releasing energy. So, uh, that is the that is what we will we'll first try to understand and once we have developed enough understanding of uh, simple uh, cases that is simple flames uh, simple processes uh, uh, simple reactions then we will be in a position to understand combustion in turbulent flows and once we have understood combustion in turbulent flows we will be in a position to understand how this uh, how combustion happens in this kinds of engines ok. So, with that we have designed the uh, course content. So, the prerequisites are pretty basic for this course the prerequisites are uh, basic thermodynamics uh, fluid mechanics and heat transfer and these are the textbooks we will follow. We will heavily depend on this uh, textbook in particular uh, for the materials uh, uh, by uh, combustion physics by CK law. We will also uh, for turbulent combustion we will go into Norbert Peters's book, for gas turbine combustion we will go into Lefebvre's book, Lewin's book, scramjets we will go into uh, Corin uh, Segel's book ok. So, here is the outline of the course ok. The outline of the course is that uh, we will we have divided this course into essentially four parts. The part A consists of background materials on thermodynamics, chemistry and transport. So, uh, this module 1 will talk about uh, the introduction which is which is which we have just covered uh, that is why we should learn combustion, why is combustion indispensable in inner propulsion engines ok. How does uh, combustion look like in actual engines uh, and uh, how we will proceed from here. So, that is covered in this introduction and then we will cover in the following we will cover uh, chemical thermodynamics and here we will talk about chemical equilibrium, we will talk about energy conservation, conservation and then we will using energy conservation we will, we will arrive at adiabatic the concept of adiabatic flame temperature. Now, this is very very important in terms of combustion engineering this uh, this concepts of chemical thermodynamics. Second this module 2 will go into chemical kinetics this will tell us how reactants that is a hydrocarbon uh, fuel what are the steps and what are the processes through which uh, the fundamental processes through which it can become a product ok. And for that we will need to understand the theories of the reaction rates and the different mechanisms. How does it happen that is covered in module 3 through this oxidation mechanisms of fuels and uh, transport phenomena. So, we will understand uh, how uh, how hydrogen is oxidized, how CO is uh, carbon monoxide is oxidized, how methane is oxidized uh, because these are the very uh, basic uh, fuels. Mm, uh, then we will understand how pollutant uh, chemistry works, how NOx uh, oxides of nitrogen is formed and how does one develop reaction mechanisms to describe these processes. 
then we will understand transport phenomena. By transport we mean like uh, processes like diffusion, processes like conduction and uh, momentum transfer which happens to viscosity. Then we will go into governing equations. Okay. Now, we see that uh, combustion happens in fluid mechanics and also there is something called uh, we chemical kinetics is important. So, how can we marry these two things? How can fluid mechanics and how can uh, uh, conservation equations uh, uh, can uh, be integrated with the chemical kinetics and which will give us the governing equations with which we can study the different kind of uh, flames and combustion processes. And for that we will go into Reynolds transport theorem to do the control volume derivation then we will do the conserved scalar formulation and uh, these kinds of different formulations for the which is which is typical for flames for understanding flames. So, in the fundamental processes uh, also we will study about non premix flame uh, like a chambered flame we will understand uh, droplet gasification and droplet combustion. Then we will talk about laminar premix flames the thermodynamics of laminar premix flames which is given by this rankin hogonio relations we will uh, cover laminar flame speeds and then we will go into the chemical structure of laminar flames. And then we will go into uh, premix flames and limit phenomena, uh, the thermal explosion concepts, s scuff concepts, uh, extinction flammability and flame stabilization. And then we will finish fundamental processes with aerodynamics of flames, aerodynamic stretch and uh, non equidiffusion. Now, these, these things, these fundamental processes as I said that in, in an engine combustion happens in a very complex manner, it happens in a very complex turbulent flows. So, to understand them we have to understand how a uh, small unit of those uh, of the combustion processes that happens in the engine how that looks like how we can understand uh, them uh, using uh, uh, using uh, this uh, b b different uh, b formulations and uh, what are the different processes that are involved. Uh, so, these parts will cover uh, this this uh, fundamental process will cover that. Now, after we have understood these things we will be in a, we will be in a situation to uh, to go to uh, this uh, mechanics and modeling of turbulent combustion and uh, these parts will be uh, will will go into turbulence. So, we will uh, look into what is turbulence, what are the fundamental processes in turbulence and uh, the reaction rate uh, 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 closure problem and basic modeling approaches. So, these will be uh, will cover turbulence and turbulent combustion and then um, we will cover uh, uh, turbulent non premix and premix combustion different kinds of flames different turbulent non premix flame turbulent premix flames turbulent flame speed and modeling. And then in the final part we will cover gas turbine combustors uh, how does a uh, for example, first we will study about atomization ignition and um, uh, combustion in the in swirling flows and then uh, what are the basic principles by which a uh, gas turbine combustor is designed. And finally, in module 12 uh, the flame stabilizations in afterburners and scramjets. So, uh, here we will talk about uh, bluff body stabilized flames some parts of combustion diagnostics and uh, we will look into flame blow off mechanism and then we will go into scramjets. Now, one thing is that these even though I have uh, formulated in these different modules these modules need not be in equal length. For example, in this you can see that in module 11 and 12 we will be talking about lot. So, we can uh, uh, reduce uh, uh, these things uh, 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 we can reduce uh, the uh, uh, different uh, we will be using uh, we will be looking into uh, different topics on uh, in preference of their importance. Okay. So, uh, some topics can be more important, some topics can be less important and will that we will uh, this is the introduction.